Welcome back, all you moviegoers, to the Four Real Movie Club, and this is part three of the Four Real Movie Club this month, where we're talking about Mission Impossible. So that means we're talking about Mission Impossible 3, because they weren't clever enough to give it a subtitle. Mission Impossible 3 came out the year that yours truly graduated in 2006, and of course, it's still an American action spy film. They didn't move it to London or anything, so calm your tits there, Sean Walker. Uh, it's co-written and directed by J.J. Abrams, and this is his first film as a director, which stars Tom Cruise, who also served as a producer in the role, uh, and also in the main role of IMF agent Ethan Hunt. The film was first released April 26th, damn it, I wasn't actually out of school, at the Tribeca Film Festival, and widely released in the United States on May 5th, 2006, still not out of school. The film was a box office success, and it received mostly positive critical reviews. Let's see what our panel gives. Tony, what is your initial thoughts on Mission Impossible 3? Man, is this a darker film. Like, holy shit. You go from the first Mission Impossible, which is kind of cheesy, fun, sort of like, you know, even though people get killed and, you know, the very opening is like, everybody's dead except for Ethan kind of a thing. And the second one's got this virus that could kill anybody and whatever. This movie just starts out like, we're going to fucking kill your wife. And you're like, yo, dude, <laughs> like, fuck you. No. But uh, as dark of a movie as it is in comparison to it, it kind of makes it more fun in a way. Like, I think it's probably the like a, a step up in terms of quality. And maybe that's from J.J. Abrams because that guy knows what he's doing. And uh, I like it. Sean, what were your thought, initial thoughts on Mission Impossible 3? All, in all honesty, I can't remember it. Because he cut his damn hair. <laughs> he, he did cut his hair, yeah. I'm looking at the poster now. He cut his hair. Simon Pegg is in it, so that's not too bad. JJ Abrams has got a thing for Simon Pegg. Like, a massive yeah. hard-on for him or something. Yeah, he's also in the Star Wars Episode Seven. He's a creature, but... And Star Trek. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Damn, he does have a hard-on for him. <laughs> 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 well, now he did a little bit into the casting... Uh, Tom Cruise, of course, reprises his role as Ethan Hunt. Philip Seymour Hoffman is Owen Davian, the most infamous black market dealer. Ving Rhames returns as Luther Stickwell. Uh, Billy Crudup as John Musgrave. Uh, Michelle Mo Monaghan, 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 Mohegan? Stickle and uh, <laughs> Davian, and I think it's Monaghan. Monaghan. Ah, fuck these names. <laughs> these are normal names. They're not the foreign ones. It's <laughs> true. It plays Julia Mead. Uh, Carrie Russell is Lindsay Ferris. Maggie Q is Zen Lee. Jonathan Rice Myers. Myers. <laughs> Jonathan wow. Rice Murr. Uncle Ben something. <laughs> uh, plays Deacon Gormley. Gormley. Declan. <laughs> Declan Gorm. Oh, oh, man. They got me doing it. Declan De Gormley. Oh, is that an I? Oh, fuck. Uh, Simon Pegg is Benji <laughs> Dunn. Eddie Morrison is Brownway. Is he one fucking name? <laughs> All right, I'm cool with it. I was able to say it. Lawrence Fishburne is Theodore Brassel. Uh, and Aaron Paul is Rick Mead. I only see Aaron Paul because he was in Breaking Bad. Uh, Sean, we'll start with you on this one. What do you think of the casting? I, I like the casting because Simon Pegg, I like Simon Pegg. I like anything that he's in. And um, isn't the black guy who plays... Um, Parry White in this, yeah, that's Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty boss. And the dude from the Hunger Games who's dead, he's pretty boss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't he's know why that was so funny. It's really not at all. Like it's a shame that he's dead. It's probably the way he dies. The way he awesome. dies in Mission Impossible Three, though, what I remember about it is pretty fucking boss. Where where <laughs> Ethan just lifts him up and he just plows into the fucking car. <laughs> that is a pretty Great. like no. <laughs> Tony, what are your thoughts on casting? All right, so Philip Seymour Hoffman is awesome as a villain, and you buy him as being like this cold-blooded bastard immediately on. Billy Crudup is really good when it comes to being somebody who, I mean, well, he's totally the villain. Like you know, <laughs> as soon as he's popping up on the screen, you're like, oh, this guy's gonna be the villain because he's a good guy, and they do that in all these kind of movies. Uh, but at the same time, to balance that out, Lawrence Fishburne's good as being that asshole that you kind of are like, well, maybe he is a villain because he's a real dick. But one of the things I like about this movie, I like how they they used well-known enough people that uh, 
it kind of like brought a lot of like star power to it, but at the same time, they weren't so well known that you can only see the people and not the characters. Like Maggie Q is not just like, oh, Maggie Q's on screen. She's actually Zen Lee and Jonathan Rice Myers is just, you know, the background and other agent. And I actually didn't even know that Aaron Paul was in this. I didn't recognize him. And Carla Gallo's in this too. I didn't recognize her either. Um, Big upgrade when it comes to Simon Pegg being added into this franchise. He's really uh, a good character that they've put in there. And I liked how Kerry Russell was the character that got killed early on. I mentioned that earlier, that they, they kill off somebody at the beginning of these films a lot. And, you know, you start off this movie and you're assuming that Kerry Russell is going to be a big character. And bloop, there goes her brain. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. She's just kind of like, oh, thanks for bloop, I'm dead. <laughs> Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about on this movie, besides casting, is we, we mentioned it when we first kicked off, was J.J. Abrams is kind of making his director's debut with this film. Um, and we know he is tied to so many great films that are going on right now. Star Trek, the first two, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. The man knows what he's doing. And Bad Robot. It's Bad Robot. Um, Tony, what were your thoughts on his directing and his debut into, like, the big action-packed blockbuster? I didn't even know if this was his first movie, and damn, he did a good job. Like, most first films are kind of shitty. Mm -hmm. But this is something that took the franchise into a whole new level. It's kind of like the beginning of where it's been lately. Like, Ghost Protocol takes it even more into a different level, but there's a clear divide when it comes to Mission Impossible 1 and Mission Impossible 2, and then there's another clear divide between 2 and 3, and he's been involved ever since then, and maybe that's why 3 and 4 and 5 all kind of seem alike, but I like that direction, and he deserves a lot of credit for that, I, I assume. J.J. Abrams, man, you're you're killing it. Good job, yeah. dude. Franchise. Better Revival. fuck up Star Wars. <laughs> I feel bad for the guy that's got to follow him. Um... Sean, what were your thoughts on J.J. Abrams' directorial debut? I think he did a solid job. That's Wait. what I remember of this film. And did honestly, I completely skipped this film because I couldn't find it online and I couldn't find it on Netflix. <laughs> and so, his hair. His so hair was I, only, I only watched like the 15 minutes on <laughs> cinema since, so shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> Said, nope, fuck it. He, did, he got a haircut. I'm done. Yep. Moving on. So I like how you're like, oh, he did a good job directing this movie that I didn't watch. <laughs> yeah. you know, so good, I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> so Jeremy did a good I, I job directing the Citizens. His first debut film was on Star Trek, to be honest. That's the first time I ever heard his name mentioned. <laughs> to give you some facts about the movie, the screenplay was by Alex Kurtzman, Robert Orsi, and J.J. Abrams. Um, music was by Michael Giacchino. Now? Giacchino, I think. Giacchino. Yeah. Giacchino. <laughs> Michael Cannoli. Cinematography was done <laughs> by Dan Mendel. Uh, there's a shitload of production companies, but it was distributed by Paramount Pictures. It was released May 5th, 2006, uh, with a runtime of 125 minutes, budget of 150 million, and it doubled its profits, uh, profits at the box office with 397.9 million. Tony, what were the high points, low points, and ranking 1 to 10 on Mission Impossible 3? Uh, you know, my least favorite part of the film is something that's very entertaining to watch. Actually, you know what? I'll put it this way. There's two things that I would say are the low points of this movie. One of them's really entertaining and it's stupid, and the other one is not entertaining and it makes sense. Um, it's tough to get through the setup of the marriage because it's kind of flat and boring. But it's totally necessary. And by the way, Michelle Monaghan, like, I would totally marry her. That's, like, perfect casting when it comes to uh, somebody who I would buy into being, like, well, she's, you know, beautiful, and she's so calm, and she's a nurse, so that's great. And, you know, I really like that casting on there. I forgot to mention that earlier. That's a bad point, though, because it, it takes a while to get through, and you kind of want to just get into the action. But as, like, tough as that is to get through but necessary, the flip side is... The fun but ridiculous running through Shanghai. <laughs> that scene where he just bolts and he's running as fast as he can in total Tom Cruise fashion. All you gotta do is look at like a gif of it. 
and you'll you'll see how like retarded it is. Like he's running like he's a goddamn Olympic athlete or something. Like and, Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, and man, it's like <laughs> it's just funny. You're not supposed to think that it's funny at all, but he makes it hilarious and. Uh, that, that took me out of the film immediately. Like, I've watched this movie, I think, three times, maybe? Maybe only twice. And I forgot that that was in there when I was rewatching this. And I literally just cracked the fuck up. And I forgot that he was running towards, like, trying to save his almost dying wife and stuff. Just like, wow, this is a really action packed scene. And now, like that, he's fucking running. <laughs> uh, favorite part of the movie is actually a line of dialogue out of the whole thing. It's something that Lawrence Fishburne says, I will bleed on the flag to make sure those stripes stay red. Like, that's badass. <laughs> you know, you go fucking kick the shit out of everybody else, Lawrence Fishburne. You're a fucking man. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give the film a uh, six and a half, seven. Nice. Sean? Ooh. What was the uh, high point and low point of the 10 minutes you saw? And what would you rank those 10 minutes? Uh, the, the, the high point, uh, like Tony said, was the running. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that. That, that. that was the thing. <laughs> Cinema since actually sped that up as well. So if you want to watch that, it was pretty I'm funny. watching it right now. It is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how he's running, though. He looks like the T-1000 or something. <laughs> I feel like I can't judge him because I know I look like this when I run on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the dude's death with the killer. That was pretty boss. So those are my, those are my two high points. No, and Simon Pegg is in this. There you go. Three high points. Uh, low point. Low point. It was only 15 minutes long. If Cinema Sins was to put in <laughs> for like 20 to 30 minutes, I would have had more of a story. <laughs> yeah, you could watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this ah, movie's too short. <laughs> and I would give I would give Cinema Sins a ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks. If you want to watch the review about the review that we're currently reviewing, check out Cinema Sins because Sean gives it a ten out of ten. Otherwise, keep your butts planted. Click to the next video because we're gonna roll into Admission Impossible for Ghost Protocol. We finally found a subtitle. <laughs>